Hey, good mid morning, everybody. This is the professor with Day Trading for Success. I've already traded the open strategy this morning. Today, I'm going to break out a sort of a middle of the day strategy that one of um, our subscribers was talking. We were emailing back and forth about taking some of the ways that we've traded. He's a proud owner of all five of the books, the Day Trading Volume Series 1, 2, and 3, and Trading in the Zone, and Best Loser Wins, and has read them all, which is great. So I respect his opinion, and his trading has been pretty good. He trades almost all day, which I cannot do, but he did uh, notice my uh, strategy with AMD. I was struggling here and there, and uh, he has found times where these large caps, particularly AMD, is even slower than in the RV strategy that's called out in day trading volume one. So um, we're going to take that for a spin today. Um, he is actually with me here, uh, along with some other people. And um, we're going to see how it works. This is his strategy at this point. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a hybrid. It's his time. He picked the time, which we will start trading right at 11 o'clock. Now, I mess around. Please read this disclaimer. I am not a licensed financial advisor. This is uh, an entertainment channel only with demonstration videos to help you learn some tips and tricks and different ways to trade. But you really should not try to emulate this without talking to a, a trained professional that you trust. So please read this. So we will be trading 500 shares, but the and I'll show you this setup real quick. This mess you see uh, is got it's got some logic to it. Um, but <clears throat> what we're going to be doing is getting in and out like in five cents, ten cents, maybe fifteen or twenty cents, rarely, because we're going to be using these pivot lines and these Fibonacci levels, and because the spread's fairly tight, we expect some slippage with 500 shares. But the idea is, is when you get out of a trade, you're trying to get out of it when it's sort of moving back in your direction for a second, right? So you will be seeing me reverse, but um, a lot of people um, that trade this type of scalping do not do that. Um, they do not, just in case it's... Um, it's just it's just a pullback for a second or something, uh, um, and it's still going to go forward. So they'll sell, bank their profit, and keep going. Again, it is a market only strategy, not using limit orders, because if you don't get picked up or you get partially picked up, it doesn't work as well. So if you have the patience to wait to get picked up, okay, but a lot of times you miss the trade entirely. So things to think about an old debate <clears throat> you know if stocks are really moving fast then the bid in the ask is probably a better way to go um and then if you're okay with partials and you're prepared to like um hit the flatten button or whatever when your share size gets upside down or, or wrong so what what do we do we set it up it's exactly like the rv strategy in day trading volume one and <clears throat> you take the candle from the previous day all right, and you see what the close was, which is 183.34 to the right of my picture. Then you look at the ATR down there, which was $8.47, I mean. You divide that by two, you subtract half of it from the close to get the ATR low, you add half to get the ATR high. As you can see from today's action, none of that matters because we're outside of that first range bound channel. All right, and, and I just drew these pivot lines. Just, you know, I, I uh, just got in here like maybe 20 minutes ago and I just started, drew the Fibonacci's. I managed to catch today, one of the levels today on the Fibonacci that already was here. As you can see right here, just a minute ago, and then I marked pivot lines. So what are these pivot lines marked on? So the pivot lines, basically, I looked at where the action was right now. That's on a 10-day, five-minute. I looked, I started the furthest back, and I marked every point where it turned around. And after, since I started back here, a lot of them didn't need to be done again because they were being respected all the way through. So I'm just creating pivot points, support and resistance lines, drawn lines across my screen where this stock has turned around before. So I'm trying to know where those are. And then the Fibonacci level, this is a 10-day back one here. You can't see the top under my picture, but um, always draw them left to right, as you know, and you're just going high to low from as far back, as close as you can get to 10 days back. And then this is the two day back one. So I expect that hopefully some of these will come into play as um, possible respected levels along with these pivot points. You never know exactly which one is going to be respected. 
Um, so you kind of respect them all till you don't. Some people uh, to this day still think this is silly, that they know where to turn around without these things. They don't need this help, that they can call the reversal perfectly. More power to you. I'm sure you exist. Um, I kind of believe I can do that as well. <laughs> but I think that these are very, very helpful for most people, you know, especially if you're newer. So the idea here is you don't let the losers go. You set a max loss, like immediately, like, you know, 30 bucks a trade, 50 bucks a trade, whatever it might be. And then you set a max loss for the day, like 100 bucks a day, 150 a day. If you don't do that, you don't want to trade this strategy because you're not like Mark Douglas says, even the best case, you're not going to get this right. Uh, in fact, you might get them all wrong. So you've got to get out. But then you got to look at it over a five-day period. So it's kind of a hybrid of, of scalping with the RV strategy by using – it's 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 a um, range bound, but the range bound is based on pivot lines here. So we're outside of the ATR, so we're really more like in an escalator strategy. But yet the ATR, where is it? Is it way up there somewhere? I don't even see it. There it is, way up there. So we're not S. So we're consolidated down here, at the uh, at the 10:45, 11 o'clock hour. We're going to start in about nine minutes to trade. Um, so we're going to try to capture these as they move up and down, and as they now remember, get day trading volume two and three. Get your pattern. I'll have links to all these. Get your padding trading books. So let's just start reading the, the patterns just so you see. So this is a downward trend with a spinning top. So if you know your patterns, you know that's a spinning top. That's a high level sign of a reversal. And what did it do? It reversed. You also uh, had the, well, this is actually where I marked the Fib, as you can see the dotted line. I was going to say, look how well it respected the Fibonacci. But I mean, this is where it was literally marked this morning, just a minute ago. Um, but as you can see, that spinning top, boom, went right up. Now you start to see um, this is a shooting star. You start to see signs of reversal. You know, here's another one you could call it. Um, probably another shooting star, a spinning top, a gravestone, rickshaw manor spinning. So th these, you're going to get a lot of these, oh, I haven't made my mind up yet. So you need to be careful in an area like this. We do have the support and resistance lines here to trade against. Um, but then you get up here and you've almost got an abandoned baby with a a bearish doji or spinning top. This is a much the strongest yet uh, that it's going to turn around, and it did turn around. You probably you might have got shaken out as it popped up, depending on when that happened. Here's where it it opened, so it shot up there for a second. Um, so you might have want to wait to get in that trade till then it showed you, and then you got down, and then you're waiting to get out. You might get out at this level, like uh oh, uh oh, but then you wait a second. Oh, it went down, and it didn't make that level, so you don't get out. You're watching the price action. You're watching the volume to see is this increasing as it's going down. So let's take a look at that particular candle. Look at the sellers down here inside. This is the scalping indicator. This is the sellers indicator. So both of them are telling you do not get out of that trade. So you write it longer. And then as you get down here, you don't break that level. As you can see, the sellers are dropping. The buyers are coming up. It's literally telling you what to do. Right. And it's and you're breaking through all these support and resistances and how much we got, guys. So we've got a group here with me. Um, still got about six minutes to go before we start trading, according to these new these new sort of rules we've made. So now you've got almost a um, you know, this is this is really uh, like a, a bullish tweezer, but it didn't quite make the bottom. But because of you see the other. Um, let's see, where did this. Oh, so this, I'm sorry. This went up here on the spinning top. So this moved up and you saw it go up right? Then you saw that this is a bearish tweezer at the top here and it went down. Then a spinning top again at the bottom of that. Again, you're looking at these levels and volume. You're going to see them up here too. And this is telling you again to move around. So there's a bunch of things to, to look at. Um, but the patterns are the first thing you look at. And then you see what's backing it up. Again, indecision, indecision, indecision of going up. You know, rickshaw man, this much stronger one, saying, we're done going up. Look, it went up there, said, everybody's down here. We're not up here. And then, boom, 
it goes down. You have this amazing pivot line that it respected. Remember, you've got the volume profile set in here for intraday that is helping you as well. These arrows are important to look at. Now, nothing's for sure. Everything's just an edge. Everything's just helping you a little bit. We're below the VWAP. Some people say, oh, I'll never trade below the VWAP. Well, you'll miss a lot of trades because you can trade below the VWAP if you just trade it correctly. Um, but yeah, everything comes with its risks. And, and everybody, uh, every, there's so many people that could play this the opposite way. I think it's going to go up and it goes down. I, well, I definitely think this is going to go and it goes down. So you can see me reading how they're going to go and somebody else might read it a completely different way and lose their butt. You know, so anything can happen, obviously. So I'm just calling you like I see them. You know, I try to I try to see the future this way. OK, so you have another a tweezer that's saying it's going up a bullish tweezer. Plus, you have support. I would have turned around here, turned around here. It breaks through that level. I'm getting ready to get out. Get out. It breaks through this level. I'm getting ready to get out. What does it look? What does everything else look like? You know, it breaks through that level. It's getting but then it goes up and drops. Probably my reverse would have been after it opened and continued to go down red below that level i would have reversed and then i've been ready to reverse right there as it broke through you know and as you can see i went all the way up here to close so i might still hold it here and then i get over here depending on which way this goes somewhere in here i'm reversing and going long you know so now we have a spinning top as this starts to go up now you look at this that's like a upward trend on a one minute um, and now it's a spinning top telling me it's going to reverse. And what does it do? It reverses. And then an inverted hammer at the bottom saying, hey, I think I'm done going down. And look at the support. So now you're getting a little bit of back and forth here, but it's starting to go up again. So I'm going to call this for everybody in a minute because I'm calling the ball. But um, let me get this. You also need to get try to look for what the five-minute patterns are doing. Um, get this. Nope, it's already auto-zoomed. Okay. I just need to bring up where this is here. There it is. Okay. Really? So you're going to want to look for patterns here too. And the five minute patterns are going to be more respected than the one minute patterns. So when you have an alignment here that they're both telling you direction, great. But the thing is here, guys, is, um, and traders will tell you trading this type of strategy where you're looking for five and 10 cents and all that stuff. You don't have a lot of time to look at a lot of things. You know, you can't, I mean, you can be fast, you can be quicker and quicker and quicker. But the idea of day trading for success here is trying to carve you out $100 a day, $200 a day, $300 a day. This share size, although a bit risky, can can get that for you uh, in just a half hour to 40 minutes. However, you may want to just do 100 shares and play it safer. It kind of depends on your tolerance level. Maybe your max loss per trade is only $10. Maybe your max loss per, per day is only $50. How do you make sure that happens? You lower your share size, you know. So um, now this is, I'm seeing this go up right here. And it consolidated right here and you're right at the point of control, right? And then this is starting to go up. This is a, a um, this actually is, is a um, hanging man that is telling you that it's going to go down. So um, this pattern saying it's going to go down, but you have support right here. So we're not, well, it did go down. So it's going down first. Now we don't know. You know this support might went out, but there's still two minutes to. So we still got about two minutes to the open. But I'm going to try to call these as I see them. This is saying it should go down, but you have to be ready to react, right? You know I've got to look down here too. Like what is happening down here? I didn't go over my chart. I'll go over it real quick. This is a one minute uh, uh, layout that I'm trading on. This is the scalping indicator. All this stuff is free on our channel. This is the seller's indicator free on our channel. This is the enhanced volume indicator free. This is MACD free with thinkorswim. Um, but all this stuff and this layout is all free. Um, various episodes that you've probably seen now in the last two or three episodes have, have, uh, I, this is a brand new layout. So I'm pretty sure I put this out because these, these videos are delayed. So you probably have seen this already, but, um, if you haven't, here it is. <laughs> so, um, so there's a minute to go and I'm down a dollar already, as you can see, <laughs> um, Everybody's chomping at the bit. Somebody's already trading. I thought we had a deal here, guys. What was that? What's that about? 
don't get out if you're going to lose right now. But, ah, that's the thing, right? FOMO. You see a good trade. This is a great short, you know. So if I had been, if we, if it had been 11 o'clock, I would have shorted this. But now, right, this is creating an area where I'm going to end up going long. It's banking off that, guys. I think I'm going to call it long. If this banks off that support down there, I'm going to go long. And uh, the pattern is calling us to go long. So we've got still got 30 seconds unless everybody wants to go in. They do. Okay. So we're going to go in long. Everybody's waving their hands. So now you can see the numbers are going to move pretty quickly, right? I'm going to look to bank off. I'm going to look to get out here really quickly, reverse, or the next one up. Is it going to break through that? See, we're not even at 11 o'clock yet, so it's 11 o'clock in just a few seconds. Now, these this is a five-minute grid on this chart, so it shows you so we know what the five-minute people are thinking. Yeah, so I should have taken that profit. That, was, that wasn't good. So we could have got into the same position had we just waited, which often happens. But I don't, you know, right when it hit that line, I should have taken it. Um, and that's basically what it told me to do, you know, and I didn't do it. So now I'm going to get ready to take it unless it blows through there. I'm not going to let it turn around again on me. So, um, but it blew through there. So now we're looking for the next one. We're looking for the next one, 175. Well, we'll, we'll look at 176 as a possibility. We're looking at 176 right there. Now, remember, the even and half dollar amount are emotional supports. So we want to we wanna take our profit and move on with whatever the trade says to do next. So we're looking to see what the trade's going to do next. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that. I got it at 175.94, and it you know kept going. So I've got to get ready to reverse again and see... But that's a great first trade. So with 500 shares, of course, you have a better chance of um, of um, of making more than a few hundred dollars. That's why you might want to lower it because it's great. Now I'm going to look to turn around right down there and keep it tight. I'm going to keep it tight with my reversals. See if I can get down there. Well, it already broke through and went back up, so that's not good news for me. That happened in a spike. So I'm just going to take that right there, guys. Oh, I think I, I think I actually slipped and lost on that. That's too bad. Okay. So uh, okay, so we got a, we got one person's red, which is not what I want to see. Okay, so right at that line, if it continues to break through there, I'm in the wrong position, so I have to be careful. Is it going to turn around there, or is it going to go right through there? So uh, so I'm looking at this. I've got a nice cushion. Now, I have a $100 max loss per trade here uh, with this share size, with this stock. So it's a very low uh, max loss. If you watch my videos, that's I usually have it much higher than that, but I don't think we can go higher than that and still expect to make money. So far, I am I am very uh, happy with this, um, with this level of uh, um, action. I'm very happy with the way this is moving. So I'm going to look to turn around again up there at 76, which isn't much money, and it could slip. So we got to watch it, see if it pulls through it and pulls back. Maybe there's seven. I'm going to take that. What I get that 7602. Now I got to get ready to turn around again if it keeps going up. Is it going to start using that little channel? It might. It might start making a new channel here, so we have to be careful. Or it might get up here and start making a new channel. So you get be prepared to go tighter if you have to. I mean, there was a lot of consolidation in here, so if I can capture those, I will. But no, it broke right through. So now I'm looking. Now I'm looking to get down here. So this would be the next spot I would think about reversing at, down to at that next pivot line. It's being, it's just, you know, it's going through it. So you can go through it a little bit and wait. Oh man, all right, I'll think I'll go through it a little bit. <laughs> so just because of the power that it moved down there, but I don't want to lose this trade either. So 
Yeah, I'm going to take that right there just so I don't lose it and then just get ready to reverse. So it broke down through it to this level. I think I got it somewhere in here. And now I just have to be careful. <sighs> yep. And I want to see this get over 100 bucks. And if it goes all the way down here, it will get over a hundred bucks. So I have to, there it's, it's going, it's, this is good. This could be a bad trade. So we're looking to see if this is going to be a bad trade. Ah, there it is. I got a reverse. Wow. And it's fading off right there. I'm going to go back again. I want to go long now. Um, I lost money there on that trade. It broke, it got to my max. So keep your max loss, whatever you do. I'm going to go short there, guys. I am watching price action more than this is right in the middle, so it's not helping me. So I'm, I'm getting prepared to, I'm going to take that as it goes down and hope that it banks off that, 175.42. And if it breaks through there with any kind of force, I'm going to reverse again. Now let's see if it can, uh, we don't have any patterns here for me to call out. We do have strong sellers here on both, you know, you can see from the sellers and the scalping indicator, I'm not in the perfect position if it, if it breaks through there. Uh, is it gonna break through there? Come on. Now there's a, there's a special course to take on manipulating the market through praying and screaming. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting? It works. Enough people do it. Self-fulfilling prophecy. If you scream at your screen, you will turn this stock around. You can hear these voices across the country. All right, I'll let that go. I got to take that. I'm going to bank that and hope that it falls off that line. Let's see slowly creeping up here to make a nice day's profit doesn't look like it's going to drop down which is scaring me maybe a little i'm just going to reverse again i don't trust it i slipped to and then it goes and i slipped to i don't know what i was at but it didn't it, it looked like it still wanted to go up so you look at the buyers at the top here there it goes so all right we got good luck there's shiitake she's here to tell you that we're going to make money today. Now, in these tight scalps, she could actually become a problem. Couldn't you? Wow, is it going to bank off that and go down? I'm going to take that and see if it banks back down off that line. Oh, and this is the time it's going to break it, is it? Oh, it's breaking it. Uh-oh. Give me another dip. I'm going to take that and go long. <laughs> I'm going to take that dip and go long. It looked like it was going to it was going to respect this on the other side, so I I just kept it going up there. So now let's see if it pulls up to uh, 176. Well, that's what we're looking for. Basically, I'll look at the market maker here. Now I'll tell you something else I'm looking at in just a second, but let me watch this trade. Darn it, I should have got out there when I had 100. I think it was at 100, wasn't it? It is, seems to be respecting that level right there. 83, oh, it blew off of it. Okay, so I should have shorted that and captured that little that little scalp there. There it goes. Get, bring up a little higher there, and I'll, I'll turn around. A little higher. Get up a little. There we go. I'll take that 100 bucks there. Look for a dip and see. It's going to break through that. Oh, man. I'm going to turn around. It looks like it's breaking through. What did I get at night? I got it right on the line. 175.94, right on the line. Oh, I'm going to go short again. I'm going to go long again. 
Am I actually making money? I'm going to go short again. I don't know how much I'm, I think I'm just staying the same price right now. So, um, I want to go long from looking at that, but I don't know. So I'm looking, I am looking at the level two a little bit, guys. Um, and I saw a couple of numbers go by that were pretty big. Uh, so there could be people that try to, sometimes they'll bracket it with like, you know, thousands of shares at one price and thousands of shares at another price. And then they just play it up and down off of people's panicking moves. It's a fairly clever way to trade, except it's illegal. But, you know, it's it's hard to catch them all. So. And they call that spoofing. And there's some really, really, really good spoofers that I've come across that. So what do I do? I just do what they do. I'm just going to move the way they're using those trades to manipulate the price. It's like if you see thousands of shares and it won't get by a certain number, then it's down here. Just play that as your channel. That's what you do. You just play their, their spoof as your channel. Well, I'm going to take that and hope that it turns around there. Again, I'm... I am managing my bad position, guys. That's what I'm doing here. I'm I'm trying to um, capitalize on small moves. 176.21. How are you guys doing? It's hard to follow exactly what I'm doing here. Um, but this is what you do. You take little scalps. Oh, oh, wow! Did you see the slip there, guys? Man, that was that was quite the slip there. Take that again. I'm going short off that line yet again. Or is it going to break? It's going to break it this time. Ouch. Go back down. Go back down. Here we go, guys. Let's go back down. Go back down. I'll take that and just so I'm banked. Oh, now I'm going to do it again. Okay. So you see a lot of, wow. There we go. So I'm stair-stepping up. Although this is extremely risky if you're not fast. You've got to be let, let it go when it goes the wrong way. Let it go. If this thing breaks 50 the wrong way, I'm going to let it go because I am getting just $15 trades, $20 trades. It, it can get exhausting. Wow. Take that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Going the wrong way. Going the wrong way. 176.20. So it's off of that line, guys. It's just playing off of that support. Um, kind of feel like I should have taken that little $5 there. 176.23. Look at the market maker going down. Drop it down just a little bit, guys. Give me a drop. Uh, a little more. Oh, I could have I could have gotten probably five bucks there. That's painful to only get five dollar trades because of the slippage. I mean, it was at twelve bucks. I'm looking for like a twenty or something, and I could and I'll do it. Uh, now I'm miss I'm missing it. So or I just want to turn around here and go long. So it does seem to be respecting this level right here. I'm going to take my eye off the screen for a second there, move that around and take that. So I'll reverse there on thirty. Unless it's going to play the whole range now. So you do look for it to play the ceiling and the floor. So I got out early because it wasn't doing that. Uh, how much longer? How much longer? Is it going to respect that 03? It's at 07, 06, 07. This is 03. Watch the price action on that. There it goes. I got to get out. Okay. That's too bad. So, And it's still going down. I'll take that. So I don't want to see it get to 175.27. It's way up here, so that's not going to be a problem. It's at the point of control, grinding a little bit. So we had a spinning top here, which I should have picked out, which meant it was going to reverse. So I definitely, my little moves were, at that point, we had an actual move that was I shouldn't have done. So Now, it seemed to have gotten support off of a shadow wick there. I don't know if it actually tapped. I was looking up at those guys. But we man I managed to break over 1,000 the hard way.
Now, my recommendation is when you do this, just buy and sell. You know how you can do a reverse, too? It's just a double tap. Just a double tap. You don't have to use the reverse button if, you, if it's not. I know a lot of people have trouble with it. Just do a double tap. It'll work for you that way. Wow. So we're looking for it to get over 176 again before I think about turning around. I'm just going to, ah, I took it, dropped to 15 right when I hit it. You see that? Man. I, I think I'm going the wrong way. So for the risk of slippage, I uh, I got out. Banking off 176 does not want to go past 176. Let's give it a chance. Wait a little longer. These scalps are just getting a little too tight. I mean, they're working, but they're really tight uh, to try to. Well, oh, wow. So that was 176. Okay, let me see. It was the way it did that that I'm hanging on a little longer. No, I'll take it. Okay. I'm going the wrong way now. Oh, dear. Okay. Does it break the 21 too? Oh, I almost reversed at the 100. I got to reverse. Darn it. I lost all that money. Damn. When I'm at 176.30... Wow, this is getting tight, guys. I had I had twelve hundred and I blew it. And the slippage is just trying to get out of these. Should have just waited for this move is what I should have done for the whole move. You can get caught up in the little the little moves. If you look at it, the five minutes just going straight up here. So I want to I want to be going long here. Yes, I turned around, tried to capture that, got back over 1,200. I, ca I think I actually captured the slip in my direction there, but I'm worried about continuing to short, looking at the five-minute scalpers indicator shows buyers. Buyers were winning out here, but now it's going the other way, so really, you're going to do it to me again? I'm going to hang through this a little longer, guys, if it goes down just to, to try to play it a little longer, which might be I might go over slightly over my max just because I watched the price action here and I'm thinking I'm just scalping a little too tight. You see me just go up and down at the same level doing a lot of effort, so. You could just uh, hang just a little longer for these. So I don't lose it in the middle. I just get the end good trades. Here we go. Get up toward that 40. A little bit higher. Oh. Could have taken that, but... Now, I would have taken that in two short scalps a second ago, but I'm I'm waiting a little longer this time. 32. That's 76.30. You guys doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to wait to like 50, 176, 50 at least, right? Or up to here at least, 43. The suspense is rising. This kind of scalp can be kind of, it can be really fun. I It could be fun if you lower your share size. If you're freaking out, you really just trade with five shares. You know, just have, have fun with it. So you, I say have fun because you keep to your plan. There's 39. So lower your share size till it feels good, you know. Uh, where it's just like, hey, you know, I made $15 today. I made $50 today, whatever it is. 37. Is it going to break that line or not? It hasn't even tapped it yet. Right at it. I'm looking at it now, 38 cents. I think it, it might have hit 40 cents once. Well, I 
that, that I, I would count on that level respecting it, or at least one, oh, is it going to drop off? That is a hanging man there now telling me that it's about to turn around. So that's a little, that, that, hang, there's a hanging man right there. So I'm not going to write it all the way down if that starts going down. But people are saying, no, we don't want to go down yet. Go, go, go. All right, jump on that wave, guys. 90% on the scalping indicator. Jump on the wave. No, get back on the wave. We want all the surfboards jumping on. There's 41, 43. I'm going to take that. Okay, well, I thought that would be higher than that. but And then, of course, that's what it does. It keeps going. Oh, my God. What are you going to do, guys? Now, obviously, this amount of money to me isn't like, oh, my God, my life is over. Call my banker. Sell everything. You're not going to see, you know, high stress or anything. But I do like to be correct. Correct, right? Am I that kind of personality? Yes. I have what they call an upholstered personality. Uh, let me see. Oops, why am I over? I'm not over, so I'm over by. Why did I not take that trade? I'm going to buy there, guy. Oh, man, I slipped through the entire amount. I'm going to go long, guys. I went long. Or did no, I just got out. I didn't reverse. That's what I did. So I'm gonna buy now. I was like, where are my numbers? These are so tight I can't I, with the slippage. By the time I push the button and then the slippage to fill it, it's like it just barely moves, but a few bucks. All right, I'll take that. I broke 1300 for the first time. Yay. Give me a tick down. 17. No, I wanted more than 17. Now it's going the other way. Oh, no. Broke 1300. Those days are gone. Really? Really? Is it going to break the 62 up there? Guys, I told you I'm going to hold a little longer to see if it comes back down. So if it breaks 100, just a hair, but I won't go to the next one but let's see if it comes back down and i get ride this is seems to be a respected channel yeah i probably told this story before but upholstered means like an a sort of an a personality where um and that was coined by a woman who worked in a cardiologist's office for like in the front room of a cardiologist's office for like 40 years and all the chairs out in that waiting room um you could always tell, you know, that <laughs> they had to be reupholstered because a lot of the people with type A like personality would sit on the very edge of the seat and just like, you know, rubbing their hands and, you know, waiting ah, with nervous. And um, so that became coined way back then. You can look it up as someone with an upholstered personality, just like wanting something. To, I look at it more like I want action, not like I'm stressed I get bored, so I will sit on the edge of my seat because I'm bored. Okay, so now it is going to really make me um, get out of this position. So I don't think it's going to go down, so I think I would just, I don't think it's going to go up, I mean, so I think I would be more inclined to just buy out. Is it breaking the 73, 74, 71, 70, 71, 70? Is it going to really break that above it? Because I got to get out if it does. I know I'm over my, I'm over my 100. I see it, guys. 
This is a strategic breaking of the rules. So it is seems to be respecting that 176.73 dropped off of it. But if it keeps pounding above it, oh, here it goes. Wow. Is it going to really? Because if it, every time it taps, it, there's a chance it just flies up. So I've got to get ready here. I think I will reverse if it breaks it. There it goes. I'm just going to reverse there. Oh. Lost it again. Misplayed it. Now it's going to drop off. I'm going to go. I'm going to reverse for a lesser loss there. Yeah. So this right here has been been pretty tight. So what started out okay is now being a little difficult to trade. But I still think this has a lot of merit here. I think this is a lot of uh, possibilities for people. It's pretty tight. I mean, we've only been moving really a dollar, a dollar and 25 cents. So if you watch your share size, even if you rode the whole thing, you can't get too far out of position, right? You can't lose too much money uh, unless you just went in too high. Wow. I'm going to take that. That's just too much. I'll take that back again. Go short. Mostly, I felt I was going the wrong way. Wow. I'm coming, I'm on, the, I'm on the, making it back up, so I don't want to mess up here again. Seemed like the last uh, 10 minutes have just been basically me taking a crap load of trades and either losing what I had or coming right back to what I had. I was thinking going for 1500, but now I'm thinking to stay above a thousand. I'll feel good. Just, just too much consolidation right here. Too, too with the slippage. It's just we need a little bit more. Just maybe a little bit more. But let's see. Yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna get out here. I'm getting tired of. Uh, that's a lot of trades. I don't know how many trades I took, but it's a lot of trades. And for those of you, the word that you have to pay, you're paying pennies per trade. Pennies per trade on Thinkorswim. This is the Thinkorswim platform. Um, and it's just not, you don't have to worry about that. And if you have $25,000 and make the PDT rule, you can margin four times. So as long as you've got that amount, you can really trade $100,000 in value, which is uh, is pretty good. So. I mean, you know, you you have to be careful because you blow your account. So you want to keep all your scalps tight. You want to trade in a simulator. I mean, let me uh, remember, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. So seek the advice of somebody you trust. Trade all your strategies in a simulator. Look at a lot of different strategies, you know, not just on this channel, um, so that you can kind of see what's working and kind of do a hybrid of your own, really, of your own strategy. Um, I got a minute and a half, so I'm going to hold it. If I do the full half hour, I'm going to hold this last trade. I'm de doggedly determined to say my last trade is going to be a winner. Up to a point. <laughs> I will say that up to a point.
I could have taken like three scalps and made 20 bucks or lost 20 bucks. You know, just not giving me enough room right now. Now, this is when people would argue like, oh, you know, buy the, uh, buy the, buy the bid and sell the ask. And, but you also, you'd have to really lower your share size because you just won't get picked up, you know. So you have to make sure that there's enough on each line. Although, you know, remember, this is more than half of these are hidden. And also on market, they will uh, give you 3.7 times and fill your uh, stink or swim well and, and fill your um, or, or swab well and fill your uh, order um, within 0.2 seconds. Wow. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that and be happy with that. It's going to keep, oh, it took a big dip there. But um, so that's, that's that strategy. That doesn't have a name other than let's scalp a large cap, you know. But I think if you set this up, this layout correctly, I do think, as you can see, these pivot points really did help. We saw them respect them time and time again. I mean, they weren't perfect, but they helped when you were looking at everything else. And I did a couple times, level two, did seem like it came into play, turning it around uh, from the position I was in. So I, I quickly, when I saw a, a big number come, I quickly um, went the opposite direction so I wouldn't get caught the wrong way. And um, I know that um, so just recently somebody was telling me before we started to trade this how they were caught. They just made a fortune off of a spoofer who was – you know, had a certain price up and a certain price down. And, and literally every time it got up there, it turned around. And then every time it got down to the other price, it turned around. And it just He just said, oh, my God, he's manipulating the market for 20 cents, you know, 20, 25 cents. And it's working. It's like, man, you know, so you could say, I'm going to report this guy. Or you can say, I want to make a bunch of money off this guy. <laughs> so check your integrity level and see which way you want to go. If you, you know, they have to be watching it i used to really be into doing that like trying to catch all those people because it just it just they you don't the apathy the apathy of the sec for those types of things is just like is it possible is it an oxymoron to say the apathy is through the roof i don't know but there's just too much they don't they don't seem to care i mean I, i'm probably somewhere in an office is listening to me screaming at me like we i, I catch so many people you know i don't know we get them all the time, friend. Watch what you say. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So look at that. That would have been – that's an easy short to call right there. Yeah, I'm getting – I'm getting – I want to get in again to trade, but I've already traded this morning. Now I've traded again, and somebody's convinced me to do the power hour. So I have to come back again and trade again. So I don't know which stock that's going to be on the power hour. I did NVIDIA on the open – um, all right, guys. Well, listen, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this, don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. We'll have, a, remember, we have all this free content, how to set up your scanners so that you don't have to pay for a service, how to set up the charts, how to get these free layouts, how to get 10 different free custom scripts that can really help you depending on how you trade, how to see which way the market's going to go. And there's all this new stuff in the works that, you know, I'd hate to see you miss, you know, the swing trading thing, the open strategy um, that we're working on, that th th there's a different, completely different, well beyond if it breaks the pre-market high and breaks the pre-market low. Um, and that's still being, even though you don't see it, um, I used it this morning. Um, we are actively working on that. So that will be something that's being tweaked and it'll get easier and easier to follow. And don't get turned off by the spaghetti mess. You saw it work. You saw it work, guys. So, all right, well, listen, thanks for watching. As always, be, uh, be inquisitive and stay green, and I will see you soon.